Good morning. So today, um, we move away from React for a while, and uh, we go to the to the server side. Um, and we speak a little bit of Express, at least the minimum things that we need in this course, and also how to, and we are going to use Express to provide an API server uh, for our React application. So the goal is to have access to a database and provide information to the React application so that we can remove the fake data <laughs> that we have in the React application, but, and we replace it with actual data coming from a server. Uh, how many of you do software engineering one in English? Okay, so all of you, in my understanding, have already used Express. Is it correct? Used, not known, but used Express. So the project is made in Express. Is it correct? And you have know nothing about that, right? I mean, it's you have the project and you have to test it, right? It is how it works. Okay. So this also can be useful for maybe understanding a little bit more of what you do in that course for that project. Uh, I think that that project is slightly more structured in a slightly different way than we do. We keep things simple. I think that the project is structured in a slightly more, slightly different and more complex way, but the concepts are the same and things are the same, are just in a different place for software engineering one. Hmm? And we are not doing testing, so uh, you can have fun with testing there. Um, so again, the goal is, as I said, implement a simple minimal web server to provide data to our um, React application. And uh, we need to do an Revision of HTTP. Do we need so? What is HTTP? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a protocol. Um, maybe something more. Okay, it's a protocol for the web. I can add. Wonderful. Um, how how, how uh, do you do a HTTP call typically? Which information you ha you have to insert in an in HTTP call? When you open a browser window, a write www dot whatever you want dot com, what happens? Okay. Yes, you have a new URL that is transformed in a, in a IP address and DNS and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Who cares? Uh, here, uh, we can say who cares. But when you write the data address, which HTTP method you use? Get. Get. So, okay. How many methods HTTP has? Many. Uh, no, not four, more than four now. But let's say the, the basic one are four and are get, post, post. put, delete. Del delete. Perfect. There are a few more that are more recent, but these are the four, let's say, old standard. Okay, so when you, well, this is, all of this is wonderful and you can, you can read it if you don't remember, but you typically have a get and a address. That could be typically the URL. And when you do a HTTP request, you also specify the version of HTTP, HTTP 1, 1 1.1, uh, 2 if you are more in, in, um, in recent uh, networks. And there are, these are the four methods plus head, plus trace, options, connect, and patch um, that are more ad other methods, not only patch is, is newer, but there are these other methods. And what to do with get typically so when you send a get request what is the normal let's say outcome of this get request you ask for a document and you receive a document so you get as the name say you get something that you ask for post 
somebody else. <laughs> Sorry? Create an information. You, you post something because you need to transfer information, you create information. Well, delete. That's the easy one. Delete something. Okay. Um, put. Mm -hmm. Modify existing uh, resource. Mm -hmm. So here it is written. So get request a representation of a specific resource. Mm? Because you have a resource somewhere, and you have a representation of the resource. Mm? So maybe you have the resource uh, <coughs> movie, like in the lab, and you ask with get a specific representation of the resource. It could be an HTML file, it could be a JSON file, it could be an XML file, it could be a representation of that resource. But the resource is unique, is movie in this, in this case. Uh, post, you want to typically create something. Put, you want to replace the representations, update the representation, and delete, as the name say, delete. Um, and all of this is, is clearly standard, and you, as a response, you have a response code, right? So you have um, 200 that is okay, 404 that is not found, what else? 500. 500? Internal server error, then other that you remember? Hmm? 401. 401. 401, that is unauthorized. Okay, and etc. Hmm? And then could be 422, that is, um, uh, that is the entity is not well format and um, 201 that is created, uh, etc. And this, does the initial number mean something? Like why 2 are okay and 4 is not found and 500 is server error? There is a meaning between these 2, 4 and 5 or not? Yes, and the meaning is? They are family of code, so everything that starts with two are positive response. 200, okay, 201 created. All positive answer. Four, four and four, four, not found. All the resource that you ask does not exist. It's not an error, because 404 is not an error. The URL is potentially correct. The server reply, there is not an error, like 500 and something, but is, let's say, more a warning. The resource that you're looking for, that specific resource or that specific representation of a resource that you're looking for does not exist for whatever reason. It's not available in that moment. But it's not an error. Everything else continues to work. And family 5 is instead errors, like 500, 503, etc. And 3? 300 and something? Redirects. So these are the families. And so when you see an, a, a status code starting with two, because it will, means that it's fine, and the response is good. No error, no warning, nothing got wrong. And then you can have okay, or created, or uh, no content, that is two or four, but you have the family of everything is fine. And in 500, is, everything is an error, hmm? etc. And so you always have the status code and the English phrase to use to describe the status code. Hmm? And you can also see these results in, um, in, in the client application that you are using. Um, then you can have a message body, both in request and in the response. Is the message body, is the body mandatory for every HTTP request? No. So do you need a uh, Okay, let's say that we can use this. So in the get, you don't need, so the protocol specified that in the get, you don't have a request body, hmm? in, but you have in the response, clearly, because you get, you ask for a request and you want the representation of the request, so you need the body with the representation of the request. Uh, in the post, yes, you, you must have something in the post because you want to 
add something or create something. So you need to have this something to be created. And the response body is maybe, is not, is not mandatory. You can have a response body. You, cannot have, you can also choose not to have a response body in the post. Um, it depends. Hmm? There are rules in the protocol. Uh, same things for put. Hmm? And the delete typically may have a response body or a request body, but typically doesn't have a response body or a request body. Hmm? So it's not mandatory to have. Hmm? So when you see no in this table is prohibited by the protocol, let's say, uh, and when you see yes is required by the protocol. When you say maybe is, there are options. Hmm? So if you read the uh, ITF specification, IETF specification, you see why, when, in which cases you may or may not have a response body for this for call. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that these methods, well, except add, work, as important for later, work on the entire resource. Which means that your, if your resource is a movie, and a movie represented with which property a movie has? In your example? ID, title, favorite, rating, date. Well, okay, these. These are the property that represent the resources. So when you get something, you should get the entire resource. Okay? When you post something to create a movie, you should pass all the properties of the movie. So the title, well, not the ID, actually. Hmm? Because if you have a database, it will be the database to add the ID. Hmm? So let's say all the non... Uh, um, um, all the real information of the movie. Hmm? The ID is not a real information of a movie. It's something that you need to store it in a database, to order, to etc. But to guarantee uniqueness, but it's not an information that a movie, a general movie resource has. It's more linked to the specific representation of needs of a movie in your application. Hmm? But the author, the title, the rating, etc. are properties of the movie. So you get, you get all. When you post, you should post all according to this. And when you delete, you clearly delete all hmm? the properties, not just one or two. And when you update with put, you update the entire resource. Hmm? So if I want to update the title of a movie, just the title of a movie, or the score, the rating of a movie, in this case, I should send the, the full movie, even if I change one, um, only one property. This is to follow the specification. <coughs> so this is in theory. And all of these act on resources, so if you want to change a bit of the resources, you have to change the entire resources. In practice, almost nobody do that. It's allowed to use, for instance, put. So forget and post, clearly not. You change the entire, you want to add something, you want to get something, you get all the entire representation. But for updating, is in practice allowed to use put to update some partial information also. Uh, and there is a method that was listed before that is actually created for editing a partial information. That is patch. So here in this table before, you see that there was a patch method here that was created to update a partial representation, so partially a resource, to the patch of a resource. So also the protocol now support a partial um, representation, but patch is still quite new as a method, so most uh, people just use most developer, they use put and allow input a partial um, replacement of the resource in practice. But in theory, you should not. Okay, this is HTTP in uh, 20 minutes. Um, did, did you know, right, HTTP already? Yes? More convinced, yes? Or, mm. 
Yes, okay, but this is what actually we need. We need to understand and to remember. We need to remember the methods. We will need to handle URL, but we're already handling URL with uh, React. And we need to remember the main status code, but the one that you mentioned are probably uh, quite enough. And, uh, and we need to remember, right, that to get, get a resource, post to create a resource, put, update a resource and delete, delete the resource. And we are going to use this to create this with Express, that is an application server. Um, that is a web framework for Node. Mm? So we go back to Node uh, and the Node uh, ecosystem. And there are many actually web framework in Nodes. Express is one of the more, let's say most popular most used, but there are many. Uh, it's also quite, quite easy to use. It's very straightforward to create an API server with, with Node. Um, and well, you can install Express like any other uh, NPM um, package. And then you Node and the name of the file that launch Express. Um, so clearly Node already has an HTTP module, but if you want to use the HTTP module, you have to build the actual server manually, hmm, bit by bit. Express provides some more um, facilities for you, like you know, parsing JSON automatically, something like that. Or providing get, post, put, delete methods easily to be, uh, receive a call in that, with that method. Uh, well, to, to run the Express server, you just need to write a node and the name of the file that contains the, the main, uh, Express server. Uh, we are going also to use because it's it's nice and it's um, it's practical. This other library that is Nodemon. That actually, um, if you run Nodemon any JavaScript file, it looks for modification in source code. So if you run an Express server, then change the code of the Express server, Nodemon will stop and restart the server automatically so that you don't have to stop and start it manually. Hmm? That is pretty, this is practical, uh, especially with, with server. And this works for any um, JavaScript file. Hmm? So, but with server makes uh, a lot more sense. Um, and notice that if you want to install, you can install, we, we typically, I, I use, we use that, but also suggested that you install with minus G. That means, uh, to you, what it means minus G? Who knows? Yes. To install it globally on the operating system. Mm? So, Right now, we always installed NPM packages locally to the folder hmm, in which the application run. And so if we delete the folder, we change the folder, we create a new folder, we have to install everything from scratch. And that's good. That's the way of working for um, uh, Node. Uh, but Node NPM has an option minus G to install things at the operating system level. Mm. So since Nodemon, Nodemon is a utility that you can use for the exercise, for the lab, for the uh, exam, etc., and for other projects, it makes sense to have it available as a utility at operating system level, so that you install once and then just use it. Mm. And this minus G allows you to install any uh, node packages globally at the operating system level. Mm. So Nodemon is one of that that makes really a lot of sense to have as a system-wide uh, facility and utility. Uh, and again, this is um, a replacement for starting the server with node and the name of the server. Hmm? And we will often write node mode the name of the server so that we can handle the uh, start and restart of the server automatically upon edits. So first step we, with Express, and then we, we dedicate the, the other one hour and a half to do exercise on this, clearly. Um, so Express, an Express file, at minimum, has three, uh, let's say, section. Uh, the first one, well, the first one is importing things. You need to import Express before using Express. That's uh, 
that's trivial. Then the second things you have to do is to create the application. So the server application needs to be created by calling express as a function. So let's say that the first part is initialization. So importing packages that you need, creating the application, adding any filters, etc., that you need that are not represented here, but will be. And this is the first part, init. Then there is the last part. Let's, let me skip to the last part. The last part that go to the end of the file, if you have everything in one file, is actually activating the server. Mm -hmm. So the first part is creating the server, creating the application server in memory. And the last part, this app.listen, is using the app you created here mm -hmm. to launch a server so listen we say start the server and start listening to the port specified here 3000 3001 5000 whatever port you you prefer and when the server start it is a, as a callback let's say when the server start do these operations so in this case it start the server on the port 3000 listening from that moment on until you interrupt the server or an exception arise and the server stops and when the server starts it just console log on the terminal server ready mm -hmm. so this callback is what happens when you successfully start the server and this is the last part that go at the end of the document and in the middle you have the actual behavior of the server so what the server should do when they receive a get, a post, a put, and to which address. And you see that all, you can imagine from this, that all the uh, routes that you can have start from the application you created, in this case app, and then there is a method for each HTTP method. So app.get means waiting for a get request app.post, a post request, app.put, etc. And all these methods adds, let's say, uh, at, at, mi at minimum, uh, two parameters. The third, say, they're required to have at least two parameters. The first one is the uh, path, the relative URL. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this get will reply, will listen to the which path. the root, hmm? localhost 3000, the root. Hmm? And the second, the other parameter, that in this case is the second one, is a callback that has two objects in it, request a response, hmm? which are, to you, what could be a parameter that is called the request what can contain this object the request body. The, no not the request body but okay. not the header but the all the all request hmm? so in request that here is written rec but you can also write a request or you can also write whatever you want is the first parameter is the request uh, contains all the requests. And so if you want parameter from the request, you can get from there. If you want the header, you can get from there. If you want the body, you can get from there. And similarly, res will represent the response. Hmm? So the request clearly came pre-filled from the request. Hmm? And the response is, in this moment, empty. It's just a template and you can add things if you need uh, to send back a response. Well, you need to send back a response in any case, but if you need the body to the response, you can add the body and send the response back. Hmm? So it's an object that you can fill it and then send it back. And this terminates the, um, uh, the operation for that route. And here you see that there is a response in which you send in the body of the response a string in this case, it is L word. 
So if, uh, if we copy and paste this in, uh, in a node file and we run it and we go to localhost 3000 from a browser, we will see in the browser window hello world hmm? as a string without any CSS, without any HTML, just the string hmm? because we pass just the string. Uh, and this, this also means that Express is agnostic with respect to what you pass back. Hmm? You can pass a string, you can pass a JSON file, you can pass an HTML file. Hmm? We will pass back a JSON file, but you can pass whatever you, you want, you can create here. Um, okay, here there is uh, what already I told you. Uh, the method, get, post, etc., uh, that you use on the app, of Express instance mm, app uh, can also be app.all. Mm, with all get everything. We we'll listen for get, post, put, everything. Mm. It's a shortcut if you need a single root uh, listening for everything. And then maybe you inside you do some if the meter is get, then do this, uh, else, etc. Mm. Um, and in the request, here you see which are the properties of the request object. Uh, there are quite a few, but we are mostly going to, to use the body to get the body. Um, sometimes the methods that clearly will say that the method is, is get. If we, it is up.get, the method will be get, clearly. Mm? But if it's up.all, we may be interested in knowing which is the method. Mm? Uh, params any parameter in the URL. Hmm? So like we did in, with the React Router, me, we may have an URL that say slash movies slash one, where one is the ID of the movie, and we want to use ID as a parameter, like the ID hmm? as a parameter, instead of writing one, two, three, etc. And so that is the parameter, we can get the actual value of the parameter through request.params. Uh, and then there are others, mm, path protocol query. And same things for res response. Uh, there are a few uh, methods in this case. We have the send, that is the one that we have seen in the example, that send back a response with a content that you, you define. A redirect, that perform a redirect to another uh, path. Uh, res.json is like send, but send directly a JSON file. While send is agnostic, you can say, okay, this is a text, this is HTML, and you have to set the content type for HTML. This is a JSON with this content type, and this is an XML with this content type. The rest of JSON automatically set the content type to JSON, so you just need to pass the JSON object to be uh, sent back. And rest.end ends the response process. Hmm? Um, and this can be joined. So you can write rest.json.end. Uh, actually, JSON and send already do the end on their own, so you can skip it. Uh, but for instance, there is rest.status, that is not written here. Um, rest.status that set the status, the HTTP, HTTP status, so 200, 400, and 4, etc. And in that case, if you just want, if you just want to send 200, okay, without anybody, you can write res.status200.end. So you can change these properties if you need. Um, whatever I already said. Um, and then there are middlewares. Middlewares in Express are function. Function that can be created by you or already available. Typically, we are going to use it, the already available one. And can be um, either used at the entire application level or for specific route. Uh, so a middleware is a function that has three parameters, request, response, and next where request and response are exactly the same request and response that we have covered before. And next is just a callback to say, if I, that must be called, 
mm, if you create a middleware from scratch, that say, I am middleware one, now go to middleware two, and now go to middleware three, mm, to, to allow a chain of middlewares. And then after the last middleware to call the actual callback with the request response, mm, to perform the operation in the route. Mm. So all, every middleware defines this parameter that can be, that must be called and will pass to the next function in the chain. And a middleware can be used um, at the application level, hmm? what's called the register middleware, with app.use the middleware. And this will mean that from that moment on, the middleware is registered in the application, and according to the middleware, it can be used automatically without specifying it anymore. So we are going, for instance, to use a middleware that's called JSON, so we're going to write app.useJSON or a middleware is called Morgan and we're going to write app.use.morgan and the JSON middleware will automatically say that every request in the application after registering the middleware will be JSON file. Automatically. will automatically parse the JSON file as a request hmm, coming from the request. So you don't have to parse it manually. It will automatically parse the JSON file and put it in a um, JavaScript object representing that. And just the middleware that defines this for every route, if you define it at the application level. Hmm? Uh, but you can also say, OK, I don't want everything to be a JSON. I want just this function, hmm? this route, to listen for a JSON file. And in that case, you can insert hmm, the middleware callback between the path and the callback in every route. Mm. So between the two parameters we have seen before, you can add a third one that is the middleware, in the middle. Mm. Or, or actually many of these. Mm. In the middle, because middleware. And then you can also, and then we will see uh, middlewares uh, as well. We are going to use middlewares, so we are not going to create we are going for now to use middleware. We are also going to create a middleware to at the end of the course, at the very end of the course, because we need it. But it's just a function that do something and call next. Mm? But right now we're going to use middlewares uh, to help us with operation, like JSON for parsing JSON automatically. And Morgan, Morgan is a logger mm? that will log the operation that the server does and put it on screen, mm? the results of the, of the operation. Uh, because by default, Express doesn't have a logger in it. Mm. So middlewares are a way to expand plugins in a way for Express. Mm. And so every time, most, almost every time that you see app.use something, that something is probably a middleware. Mm. And similarly, if you see something between the path and the callback or request response, that is a middleware. Um, well, Express has also a way to serve static requests. Uh, with this middleware, it's called express.static and it say which folder you want to access static requests. Static request means CSS file, images, content that does not change dynamically. Hmm? So images, you don't change images. You just pick an image from the server and pass it. And that's it. You are not generating the image on the server hmm? almost every time. Hmm? So there is a way if you use Express to serve a classical uh, web page, an HTML web page, there is a way to pass uh, information, static information, with this middleware that is express.static public. And you can also define which URL is used for serving the, uh, the static information if needed. Um, and mm. if you need uh, parameters, like these, for instance, hmm? so login, question mark, user, equal, pass, etc. You have the values in this parameter in the request.query. Hmm? So query will get all of these uh, object, user equal fc, pass equal one, two, three, and clearly, and, and also give you another object to say query.user, that is the first one, and query.pass, that is the second object here. They are called the same way you call it in the 
parameter in the URL. Um, if, again, you have a post or a put in which you have a JSON body, in a requested body with the middleware express.json, you already have the automatic conversion between the JSON file, textual file, into the, uh, a JavaScript object representing the JSON file. And in a requested body, you will get the object, the JavaScript object representing the JSON document. And in, again, request.body.user, you will have the key user in that file and in request.body.pass you have the pass key in that file and this apply to whatever uh, variables whatever names you have in the J in the json file hmm? so in this case user and password but if you have score you can write rec.body.score and you will get the value of that of that score in that case hmm? and again with this middleware that is json it will automatically convert a JSON representation, textual representation, into a JavaScript object containing this information and ready to be used in this way. Without this, you have a text. In the body, you just have a text, a string, and you need to do whatever operation you want to retrieve from the string something that you can use in code without this middleware. Um, similarly, you can well use um, regular expression you can write url as you as you prefer um, in very complicated way you can also use arrays if you want to have a single request responding a single uh, route responding to multiple path hmm? you can have an array instead of just a parameter a string you can have an array of strings and that will match all of them um, and similarly if you have user 34 books 8989 8, you can use this hmm? colon a variable colon a variable whatever you can call it as you prefer and in the requested params you will have both this value hmm? so rec.params user id you will get 34 in this case and rec.params book id you will get 8989 8, in this case so to get parameters from the URL you define, you can use this syntax and then in rec.params you will have all the information that you need. And I was saying before Express doesn't have any logging and so we can use a logging middleware that's called Morgan that needs to be installed separately. Uh, differently from express.json that as the name say is already included in express it just need to be activated morgan it be installed separately and it's a uh, a middleware for logging mm? so we will just import it and define as a application level middleware for logging the information that we see in the in the server so when we do a, a request we will see that the request arrived and not arrived 404 500 the error associated etc mm -hmm. and here in the parentheses of this callback uh, you can specify the level of uh, logging required uh, that is info develop dev for developer etc and these are more or less variables mm -hmm. and we typically are going to use dev because it's the information that you could expect as a developer to see on screen to understand how it works and finally um, just to make another example of another middleware there is a middleware that's called express validator that will allow you to validate the request body coming from a client and will allow us will give you a series of methods so you can check for instance that a field in the request body that's called username is an email and this is email is a method that this validator will provide to you and if all these checks or is length minimum 5 maximum 11 or is integer to check if it's a number etc a series of method to validate the request and the uh, the results will be then available in a, a validator results object 
hmm? that is provided by this middleware that you see is between the path and the callback as any middleware so in the middle position in the route and in this validation results um, there will be errors so if you don't have errors you can proceed if you have validation errors you should stop and say listen these are is not a valid request body you want to create a, f a movie but you didn't provide a title or you are providing a title that is not a string but is a number so it's not valid as to represent the resource that i have so it will give you give you client an error so that you can send a improve the request to the server hmm? and this is another middleware and then there are many other middleware um, and we are going to use in the future in the next month uh, these other two listed here one is course to enable course cross-origin request uh, resource sharing um, resource sharing and the other one is passport that will allow us to have uh, authentication. So login, log out in the React application hmm? for the React application. And then we, we are going to do an example of this, but any questions about Express? Then again, we are going to do an, an example in the next hour. So we can put the, all of this in practice, but any things that doesn't resonate well Everything is clear. I don't know how to interpret silence. Silence means yes, no, maybe. I'm waiting. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, good. I don't know if it's good, but um, we'll see. Hmm? Okay, so. Before doing the example, let's speak a little bit of how we can design APIs. Um, okay, so okay, so what what are HTTP APIs? What's their purpose of having HTTP APIs? Somebody else. I know that you know the answer, but somebody else. Away from for who to interact with? Them. Okay, away from uh, for a client, whatever it is, a client to interact with a server. Uh, what what is a client? A machine. Mm, okay, some examples of client. Uh, my PC. A browser. A browser. Mm -hmm. And another example of client, so a React application is a client. It's it's running a browser, but is more is can do things uh independently in a way from the browser right you can we will see you can call an api from react even if the browser doesn't change the url hmm? so it's still working in a browser another example of a client uh, yes web page react let's say that's the same family An Android application, a mobile application, it could be a client that calls some HTTP API to get information. Mm -hmm. And a way to connect client with server for, well, I already said that, but what, what's the purpose of having an API to connect? But to connect means? Exchange to exchange information, to get information. Information typically used by the client to do their job. Hmm? rendering pages showing information sending information from updating information from the client to the server etc yes also another server can be a client for a, a server yes a any software can be um, um, a, a client in that way acting like a client and what it's typically happens is that you have uh, some information hmm, that you want to represent or you want to change uh, from the client side these are encoded nowadays as um, json a json document and the server will expose some url representing 
the endpoints to get this information, change this information, update the information that you want, etc. And in the middle, well, in the middle, you need something that say, okay, this URL represents this piece of information and will accept this JSON as a request body and will provide this other JSON as a response body. Hmm? So a document for developers that allow the developers of the clients to use the API made in the server. Hmm? Because in practice, so here we will have you acting as developer for the client and developer for the server. You, you have to agree with yourself on which are the APIs. That should be easy. But in practice, the API is created by someone somewhere in the world and you maybe are creating the client. Or vice versa, you are creating the API for consumption by others and you need to communicate to the others which are the valid input and the valid output and the URL that you expect from these and which are the errors that you can provide hmm? the things that works and doesn't work it cannot be everything that the client developer has in mind or vice versa everything that the server developer has in mind the http api developers in mind but there should be agreement and this agreement is typically a document that explain and show uh, in various format um, which are these api and how to use them hmm? um, so do you know what is json who doesn't know what is a JSON file? Okay, who knows what is a JSON file? Okay, and the others <laughs> that didn't raise the hand before and now? Who knows? Okay, what is a JSON file? How is made a JSON file? Okay, let me go here. Okay, well, a JSON file is stands for JavaScript Object Notation, J JSON JavaScript J Object Notation, and it's actually part of the JavaScript specification. Hmm. Uh, it's a standard. It's an ECMA standard, like JavaScript. Uh, as a known application type, this is application JSON, and is made of these primitive that are strings number object array through false and null hmm? these are the primitives a string with quotes a number without quotes an object an array and the values through false null these are the primitives for any json file and the array is starts with parentheses so like a javascript array and then you can have some value separated by a comma. And an object instead is made by a pair, string value, key value, hmm? where the key must be a string and the value can be whatever. Hmm? And you can clearly have an array of objects and inside the object you can have a string key and the value is another array or is another object. You can put these together uh, as as you prefer as you prefer hmm? in a very complicated way if you want and this is an example of a json is a text file for exchanging information structured in this way hmm? so this is an object and then you have string mandatory string a value that in this case is a string another this is another property of the object that is address as as value as another object and the postal code has a number as value instead of a string and there is no quotes. And then phone number that is still a property of the object as in, in, inside an array, not an array of objects, but an array of strings in this case. The array could be whatever, strings, numbers, objects, etc. An array of things. So these are, this is JSON, it's text file. Um, and this is the way in which nowadays most of the uh, API are called the most of the information exchange. Hmm? Let's say 10 years ago, we would probably have spoken about XML, but nowadays we are speaking about JSON hmm? as a way to exchange information for the web, especially, but not only. And 
since JavaScript, JSON is actually a subset, is, a, is strictly connected to, to JavaScript, there, is, there are ways in JavaScript native to pass from a JSON file to a JavaScript object and vice versa. Hmm? And these two methods are json.stringify that converts a, J JSON, sorry, a JavaScript object into its own representation of JSON and json.parse that does the opposite get a json string like this and convert it in a object in a javascript object or in a javascript array because clearly all of these this is very similar to javascript it's already similar to javascript J javascript objects are made in this way javascript array are made in this way strings are allowed with quotes uh, javascript is numbers as true false well, it has uh, other values like undefined, etc., that JSON doesn't have, but this method is allowed to parse one to another. Hmm? Um, so these are two methods: stringify to create an to create a JSON file, a string from an object, and uh, parse to do the opposite. And the URL, the the middleware JSON. Mm, that we mentioned before will do this basically automatically for us. But if you do, if you need to do it manually for whatever reason, because you need an object from a JSON, not from an Express API, but from uh, another call, another database, or in React, you receive a JSON, and in React you don't have Express. You need to convert it in a JavaScript object. You can use stringify and parse to do the operation that you you need to do, mm? and you will have a, J a JavaScript object or array object in, a, in, a, in any way to uh, manipulate hmm? and this is JSON so how do we structure URL for the APIs um, so we will try to sort of use remember something that is like the rest uh, rest like architecture a uh, rest is a architecture of pattern for defining uh, operation and uh, also URL, not only URL. And we can def define that we have two types of URL, collections and individuals. Hmm? So collections are URL that represents, as the name say, a set of items. Movies, students, courses, answers, questions, etc. Hmm? And so we can write a uh, URL like something slash APIs slash questions. Hmm? And we know that these questions represent a collection of questions. And then there is the element that is represented with its own ID and is written in the format collection slash identifier. Hmm? So student slash the identifier of a student that in this case is the student code, the student ID, or courses slash the identifier of a course, that is the course code, for instance, or movies slash one, if one is the identifier of the movie, etc. Hmm? So individuals after the collection. Hmm? So this S123456 is one individual of the collection student. It's not one individual of courses, but one individual of students. So this will create a pattern in your API so that when you see something written in, in this way, you know that the first one is a collection and the second one is a specific individual within the collection identified in that way. Hmm? This is good practice in general. Uh, how do we define URL? You, we use nouns, not verbs, and we use plural nouns for uh, collections and concrete names. Hmm? So, Courses, students, movies, questions, answer, not things, items, objects that are general term. We try to be more specific as possible. And we can have a series of operations on the URL of the HTTP API, add, delete, update, find, search, etc. And we try to map this operation which HTTP methods so clearly 
the list a collection a list all the movie or the information retrieving the information associated to a specific movie will be done with get hmm? so we, when we get on the collection we get all the collection when we get a single item in the collection we get the information on the single item hmm? so get movies we get all the movies get movies slash one we will get the movie with id number one post will create a new item in the collection hmm? so it works with the url of a collection so post slash movies will create a new movie hmm? you cannot do post slash movie slash five because you don't know which is the id of a new movie you are going to create it will be the server that will assign the id in some way hmm? not you as client developer that will decide which is the id you don't know which is the id because it will be the server providing the information as the source of truth of the real information so post only on collections to create object put to update a single individual in the collection so the url will be in the um, not on the collection but on the individual and delete in theory will be on single object to to delete hmm? to individual to, to delete hmm? so typically you don't do a put on a collection you don't do a delete on a collection you can in theory but it's like a bulk delete or a bulk update of all elements in the collection that is clearly dangerous so it's typically preferred not to have hmm? if i want to update three things i will update three things because the collection can have hundreds of things and doesn't really make sense to update the entire collection at once or delete the entire collection at once um, so if you for instance look at the uh, google design api uh, you see that for instance they say that for get on a collection you call a method list something so if you want to get movies you will call the method encode list movie if you want to get a single resource get movie or get something uh, to add a, a something create to update something update and to delete something delete mm? so this is a documentation that google provides to make a developer understand their own api and also as, as a way to create better in a way apis http apis by providing an example and providing information and also listing clearly that a post will have a, re a request body while a get will not for instance and then you can have relationships hmm? because maybe you have not only collection individuals but you also have a relationship between them so for instance we in our example we are doing it in class we have a relationship which is which is question and answers because an answer exists only because a question exists we cannot have an answer without a question clearly hmm? so in that case we will write questions slash the id of the questions slash answers because these are all the answer related to the single question identified with id whatever that is part of the collection questions and same things for the other kind of relationship you see it's just a way to write url is is how we can write things in a way that are clear for ourselves to remember for others to follow some sort of standard practical standards that we are used to while creating http apis and if you want to do some resource search you can use the search parameter that we also mentioned last week that are available also on the clearly on the api like question mark parameter equal value if it's more complex search than not the relationship or getting all the information or getting a single information so like filtering something could be done in this way errors uh, you should clearly reply in case of errors with a meaningful HTTP status code 
So if everything is fine, 200. If it's a get of a movie that does not exist, it will reply the 44 because the movie does not exist, etc. And the response body should contain more information that are useful for the client application to display on screen and say what's, what was wrong. Hmm? That is not the error that the database generates because that is not understandable by the uh, user of your client application. It will be hopefully understandable by you. Hmm? But a, a message that is understandable by the target population of your, intended population of your uh, application, hmm? your React application, your client application. Um, okay, we, we just uh, add an overview of this, but if you want, there is, again, Google providing uh, these entire design guidelines on how to build, to write hmm, HTTP APIs. But in short, we, we mention the, the main things here. So how we do this in, in Express? Quite simple, app.get, the URL, we will set the URL as we defined with collections and ID when needed using parameters. Hmm? Request a response will be in JSON, so we will use the express.json middleware so that we have the request in the request.body already as, a, as an object, JavaScript object derived from J uh, JSON and we'll send the response with rest.json so that we already send the JavaScript object we have in JSON format back. Hmm? And we need to always validate input parameters. That is repeated three times for a reason. Hmm? Because it's fundamental to, in a server, in a server API, to validate input parameters. Why? Why it's important to validate input parameters in a server API? Which means security concerns? Then create data inside the, the server that can generate errors or having problems. Exactly. If you don't validate, you can if you don't validate the, the request, you can insert in a database or in the server random data. Data that you are not expecting, data that you don't want, data that is wrong. Hmm? So if you don't validate you can generate security concern in a way, but also false data or unreliable data or can generate errors if this data is really bad formatted. So you need to validate input parameter and never trust the client. So this, even if the client will check the form and we, because we will check the form, right? If you remember, when we have a form, we check with required, with min length, we check the form. Even if the client check the forms, we need to check again on the server hmm? for these reasons, because we don't want data that is malformatted or wrong or can create problems, including security problems in the future. So we always need to sanitize and check the input parameter before storing them in our case in a database, because once this data is stored in a database is, let's say, forever. Hmm? And every other client that read this data will get the wrong data back. And this will, can cause problems also in the client application, not only on the server. Hmm? So it's important that when we store data, when we handle data, we are sure that the data is the information that we expect to have, compliant with the other data that we have. And here there are three examples, but we are, are going to do this in, the, uh, in, in code in the, in the next hour. And we also use, so in software engineering, uh, you are using Postman, right? Yes. yes. Uh, we are not going to use Postman, but you can if you want. Uh, uh, it, here in the example, we are going to use this REST client that is basically the same thing as Postman, but is in Visual Studio Code. Mm? So we don't leave a Visual Studio Code for testing the APIs. Mm? So just, but it's working like Postman. It's exactly the same thing as Postman, it's just another software. And it's a Visual Studio Code extension that get a file written in this way, uh, which each entry separated by the three ashes. And it will allow you to test APIs without leaving Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why we were going to use it. But you are free to use also Postman if you want to test your APIs. 
hmm, in the lab or before submitting the project for the exam or whatever tool you want this is just one tool that does the job and that's it so any questions otherwise or even if you have questions we you can use the break to do the, to do that so we can have 20 minutes break and then we start again with planning dpi designing dpi and implementing some of them